Are we live now? I think we're live. Yep, two seconds. Okay. There we go. Hi, Facebook friends. It's Cindy and Christine with Candles and Supplies. And today we're going to be doing candle carving live. And this is pretty amazing. Christine has never carved a candle before in her entire life. And she swears on a puppy's life that she has never done that before. So <laughs> anyway, but um, this is how easy we just kind of wanted to show you how easy it is to carve candles and stuff like that. A lot of people are doing it at like festivals and craft shows and everything. It's great for destinations like beach shows, do like beachy themes, um, vacations, you know, anybody at a destination, vacation destination, like to set up and everything. We're going to go every, over all the equipment. You're going to get to see a live carving, everything like that. So it's going to be really awesome. So here we go. I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you the equipment that we use. We'll go over that first and that way you can kind of get a gist of it. There's not a lot, but you need, you know, kind of a little bit special equipment, different than your typical candle making equipment because you're doing something different. You're carving and not just pouring into a jar or anything. So turn the camera around. I apologize if it gets shaky. We're in our really awesome candle room here today. So first we start off with a base and it comes in a package like that. Christine's going to unwrap it and show you. So, right yeah, right now. Okay. Yeah, right now, too. <laughs> so, we start off with a six point star base. So, this is pretty much a naked candle. And what we do is this is what she's going to make in the end. This candle's really old. This was the first candle that I carved. Um, John from Candle Fun made me carve this candle when we were having a workshop and I was all stressed out. And, like, I don't have any time. He's like, come in the room and carve a candle. And I did, I immediately de-stressed. It was awesome, it was one of the best experiences of my life. So thank you, John, for bringing me into this world of candle carving, it's pretty awesome. So what we make with our blank naked candle here is a forever candle. So these candles have like an oil chamber on the inside. So you would put like regular lamp oil in there, uh, which is a liquid paraffin. And then it has like a, a fiberglass wick and a ceramic tube that goes in the inside. So you just put that on the inside and uh, you would light it up and it glows. You can also use like a little LED tea light in the bottom. Um, the bottom has a hole here. So you can use like a little LED tea light. I think I have one right over there already out on the counter. And that's kind of cool because if you put one of those in the bottom, we'll show you. If I can turn inside. it on. Yeah, you turn it on and the LED tea light, you can just put right in the bottom there. Maybe you can turn out the lights, you can see it too. So you see like how it glows like in the dark and stuff like that from the LED. If we actually had the top lit, it would glow from the top and the bottom. So it looks really cool in your house and everything. So everywhere you make the cuts, um, you'll see the light through and everything. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, next we have a rack. We use the candle fun system just because I feel like it's a really good way, like if you've never carved candles and everything, um, I feel like it's a really good way, a really easy way to learn. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm not a carver, I'm, you know, I, I don't carve pottery. I've never even thrown pottery. I'm not really artistically talented in any way, but I can carve a candle and they look pretty good and people told me that, so. Um, and it's a lot of fun too, it's relaxing and fun. So this is the base that our, our candle gets put on for carving. And that way, rather than like having it swing from the wick or whatever, um, we, we use that base so that we don't have to touch the candle. All the, you know, the turning of the candle and everything is made by the handle. We'll show you that in a little bit. This is a rack that we have behind and it's got these little hooks on here. So we just hang the candles there to dry. Like once we've dipped them in the gloss and everything and they're all finished, we hang them there to dry. Um, over here, we have our melter. And you see it has six wells and it'll turn the camera to you where you can see the whole thing. So it's got six wells in it. We have all different colors in here. Um, and what we use in here is a paraffin wax because paraffin is very flexible and everything. Um, you need the wax to be flexible to make the carved candles because you're going to be cutting it. You cut into the wax, you, you curl it and make it all twist in different shapes and everything like that. Um, so we use a paraffin for that. Um, there is rumors that very soon there's going to be a soy wax is very flexible, but for right now the soys out on the market are just too brittle to use for carving. So we use paraffin instead. Now in the wells, you'll see, in the white you can see especially, you see how this color's kind of separated? Um, what we use in uh, candle carving is called pigments. And they are not a candle dye. It doesn't dye the wax at all. It's actually like, um, you know, wax impregnated pigment. So it kind of separates from the wax. So what we need to do before we carve is just stir up the wells to get the, the colors nice and Nice and smooth and creamy and everything. 
the colors kind of sink to the bottom because they'll separate out. Like I said, they don't, they don't actually dye the wax. This is what pigments look like. So they come in slabs like that. And you just, you know, as you add wax to your melter and stuff like that, you add pigments to the, the melter and it mixes in and everything. So today we have green. Do you want to start mixing those up? Um, and you mix them up before you carve every time you want to mix up the colors in there and get them nice and clean because they're kind of watery to begin with because it doesn't blend in there. So that doesn't look watery. The orange is very strong. Pull the white dipstick out. So you see how the white doesn't coat on the dipstick very well? Christine's going to start up and then we'll pull it out again and you'll see like once the pigment's mixed in there that the color becomes a lot more solid and a lot creamier. So we always mix up the wells really good before we dip into them. That way the colors on our candle are going to be really prominent and everything. Um, I'll show you the difference. Like pigments, the colors never bleed together. Um, on this candle, you can see this candle. This, this candle's like 10 years old. You can see the colors are as sharp and everything. It's a little faded on the outside from being in our showroom and being in the light and stuff like that. But you can see how there's the definite lines between the white and the teal and the purple. Um, and they haven't bled together. If you use regular candle dyes, the candle dyes will eventually bleed together. I don't know if you've ever tried to make like a candy cane candle or, you know, a red and white striped candle. Like after a year, you will have a pink candle. You will no longer see your stripes because the colors kind of bleed into one another. So it's very important in carving to use pigments and everything. So now after she started, we're going to pull that out and the color's a lot thicker on there. White's kind of a difficult color on the background, but, but it is thicker on there. So it'll make like nice layers on the candle. Um, so she's going to stir the colors up and get ready for it. Um, we have a bucket of water here too. And I usually always put that right next to the, where we're dipping in. So put that a little closer. So after each dip, she's going to dip the candle into the water to cool it off and get it ready to accept another layer of wax. Um, initially, she'll put her core candle into the clear melter and just heat it up for about 90 seconds. And then she'll dip it into the water. And then she'll go back into her first color and do like three dips, two, three, four dips in each color. The more dips you make in a color, the thicker the color band is going to be. So on this candle here, I did three dips in each color. So, and it, they all look about the same. So you can see if I did four dips in one color, you would have like a, a wider color band. If I did like two dips in one color, you'd have a narrower color band. I think I have some other ones over here where you can kind of see that. Sorry if I'm making anybody sick by going around. So on this candle, you can see we only did like two dips in the, the blue on the outside. So it kind of, or the purple, it kind of looks there, but we did more dips in the pink, so it looks more pink. So the more dips you make in each one, the wider the color band is going to be. Um, we have a bucket of candle gloss here that we're going to use at the end to dip the candle into, and that gives it like a nice, strong, glossy finish. Um, and you know, just makes it really pretty. It makes it stand out. The colors pop back out again and everything. So it makes it look really awesome. So that's the end unit. And then we'll bring it over here, back to our table to dry. So, all right, is everybody ready? Are you ready, Christine? Hopefully. All right, nice. So the first thing she's gonna do is put the handle in here. The candle fun system always works with like a candle handle in your core. And the handle, yeah, there you go. You wanna twist that on. Um, we went through this first before she did it, but she has not carved a candle. She just saw it done um, in a class this morning. So the handle makes it nice and sturdy. It's where you can pick up the candle, um, all your, all the touching of the candle. You don't even need to touch the candle. The wax is gonna be really soft once we start dipping it. So you wanna have the handle in there. That way you can hold the candle, move it around, put it on your rack, dip it in the things, and the handle makes it really nice. It holds it sturdy and everything. And it's just a handle that goes inside that oil chamber and then tightens down. Um, so it's very, very handy. John, the inventor of the Candle Fun system, is absolutely one of the most brilliant people I've ever met in my life to come up with this whole system. So he's pretty amazing. So the first thing Christine's going to do, she's going to dip her candle halfway up the handle into just clear wax. And what this is going to do is heat up the core. Um, the core has been at room temperature for like ever since its core birth. So it's been at room temperature. We want to heat it up so that we can cut it and it cuts nicely without like crumbling or breaking apart. Um, if anybody's like broken wax slabs or whatever, you know, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. to break the big wax slabs when they're cold than when they're warm. So, um, so we're just going to heat it up and I should have been timing her. You want to do between 60 to 90 seconds. We have 90 minutes. Yeah, no, we haven't hit that. And this is like the longest 60 or 90 seconds of your life. So especially <laughs> when you're like leaning over and stuff. <laughs> 
you know, make your back a little sore. Mm. So this gets the wax already. And you can see it, she's got it dipped to where it's a little over the candle. That way the candle gets nice and coated with the clear wax. Everything on the candle gets a little softer, so it'll be easier for her to cut. So I'm going on probably 45 seconds now. And then do you know what color pattern you're gonna do? Well, we do have the yellow, orange, and the red, so I was thinking a sunset pattern would be Ooh, pretty. Oh yeah, that sounds really good. We usually use a white as a separator too, because if you did yellow and then orange, you would get mm. like a dark yellow or a yellowish orange. Okay. So in between each color, you want to dip into the white just to separate the colors. And then maybe at the thing. end, you could blend them. We do like yellow and then orange and then red and blend it into like this sunset theme that you want. That would oh. be really awesome. So that sounds cool. All right, I think we're right at about 45 seconds. So you can pull that out and you just want to pull it out nice and slow and let your wax kind of drip back into the pot. You don't want to get too messy at this point, like pulling your candle out because then if you drip the wax into the other pots, then you're migrating your colors and everything. And clear, it doesn't really matter. So then you want to go in and out of the water quick. Not too quick. There, nice like that. And you can just give it a little, just once, just once, and just twist it off a little. And now pick your first color. That's a hard decision. Yeah. It'll glow um, when you light the candle up. Whatever you choose for your first color, that's the color that it's gonna glow inside. So I'm gonna go with that. yellow because it's the lightest. That's so probably a the good best glow. glowing color. So she's just gonna go in and out of the yellow. She doesn't need to hold this for 90 seconds. I'll start it up for her. Now she doesn't need to hold it for 90 seconds because she already has her core warm. So she's just gonna go in and out. Yeah, slowly, not messy, but quick enough. It doesn't need to take all day. And then if she lets the wax drip, and then she's gonna go into the water pot. I'm gonna switch spots with you oh, over okay. here because I think that'll be easier. Ooh. Oh, much better. Got our natural light. Yeah. Good, and then just let the water drip off. And then you wanna do three dips in the yellow. So you get a nice wide band of yellow. So you can just go in and out of the yellow. Excellent, and then in and out of the water. Then in and out of the yellow again. So the reason why we dip the candle in the water in between wax dips is so that it kind of cools the surface of the candle and gets it ready, primes it for the next wax dipping. If we didn't dip it in there, then the wax wouldn't build up as nicely. And the, the whole reason we have all the colored layers, one more dip in the yellow, I think. Okay. It's a lighter color, right? So we want to get a little yeah. more pigmented. Yep. A little darker. So the water kind of primes the wax and gets it ready to accept the next layer of wax. Otherwise, it'll just keep going into the hot wax and getting thinner. The wax in this melter is anywhere between 100 to 165 degrees. It's thick enough to where the layer filled up, but thin enough to where you can dip it in there and it coats the candle nicely. So now she's gonna do three dips into the white. And the white is our layer separator. Good, she lets the wax drip. And then in and out of the water. And we do carving classes here all the time, so it's a lot of fun. It takes about, you know, if you have like 45 minutes of time, you know, call us, make an appointment, and we can get you set up. We usually do them like Tuesday through Thursday. It's $30 per candle, so um, and we have a lot of people that do them as couples or whatever, or, you know, just to relax for a special occasion. I've had people come in and make candles for their weddings and stuff, so that's pretty cool. It's a fun thing to do. Was that three dips in the white? That or? was three. I was talking but not paying attention. I was paying attention, don't okay. worry. Okay, excellent, good. Somebody's got to here. I'm going to stir up your orange for you. That way you get a nice, this orange is like super electric. Wait till you see this. This is pretty amazing orange color. All right, and now she's going to do three dips into the orange. And you can see when she pulls this candle out, you can see the wax. It'll start, it, you can see it start building up. So see, it looks like it has stalactites on the bottom. That's the wax drippings from it building up, so. Look how cool that orange is. We're only on layer one. Layer one, this is layer two. So like once I started carving and did like probably 20 or so candles, 
The whole dipping part of it was really boring to me. So I like the carving part. It's fun when you're doing your first candle. Um, but after that, the dipping kind of gets kind of boring. So, And that's when, you know, it's time to change up your colors. Now, these vats are pretty cool. So you can see there's like six different chambers of six different colors. So if you want to, if I want to change colors, I have a bunch like in that closet there, but I won't open the closet because it's dangerous. Do white to separate your layers. So do three in white. Otherwise, you'd have like some type of like orangish red color um, but these vats are cool so you can remove like these individual chambers here and I have other ones with lots of different colors in there like blues and silvers golds you know just about anything so you're not like stuck to the same six colors every time just get some extra wells and you can change it up with the season so usually we put like I mean we saw red and green in here from Christmas and stuff and I like the whole sunset thing going on so I like yellow and orange and we had green for our eagles but they disappeared off the uh, face of the earth so we'll just say it's green for Christmas and not eagles so <laughs> that was yeah I believe that was three dips so if not that's good it's enough to separate your colors so and now let me stir up the red a little bit it looks pretty good but we'll just give it a quick stir our pigment mixes in with our wax. Awesome. And she's going in and out of the red. You're doing awesome. It's getting heavy. She's like a natural. No. <laughs> but you see now there's a whole lot more wax buildup on the bottom as we get more layers and everything. So and it gets heavier too. Yes, I've noticed the heaviness. Yeah. Good thing you're like super strong strong beast oh yeah and your horse <laughs> christine's like a pretty amazing horseback rider so she's got to muscle around like 1200 pound horses all the time so it's true makes you a better carver right yeah exactly <laughs> it was good for something <laughs> yeah 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 nice look how pretty that is on the outside it covers so nicely it looks awesome Was that three in the red? That was three in okay. the red. So now you're going to use white. That way it gets your candle nice and light. And then since now it's getting heavy and thicker, you're going to think about like your last color. So we'll get a nice white base. And then you can do three dips in the yellow, like after you're done the white. Okay. And get that looking pretty awesome, like a nice yellow color. And then you'll want to, we'll take it to the next step when we're ready for it. That way we get a blended finish. Of this white a little. It'd be a little milkier, I think. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, everybody, today. So, we have 21 people on here. That makes us pretty popular. <laughs> More people than I usually get listening to me. So, now she's got a nice, nice, beautiful white layer build up. So, this is going to be her outside layer. This is the grand finale, folks, Ooh. of the dipping. I know, right? Getting heavy. Let me let me just stir this yellow. That way, you get a nice thick coating on there. So it's separating a little bit. Yeah, it did. Yeah, did you see that on the top where it kind of looked? Yeah. So that's when you know you need to stir it up a little. All right. Make it gorgeous. Yeah. So one dip, it kind of looks. You get somewhat of a yellow coating, but the more she dips in there, the deeper the color will be. So to get that deeper yellow that she's going for, because this is going to be the outside of the candle. And another dip in here. Awesome. So you see it's a little darker. And then one more dip in the yellow should give you a beautiful color. So then when you go to the orange, you only want to dip the candle like two-thirds up. So do, do your last dip in yellow. Getting ahead of it here. I'm getting excited. Yeah. So. This is so much fun. I love doing this. Oh, the lid fell on me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd carve candles all the time if, you know, we didn't have to, like, ship orders and, and stuff. Do work. And do work. Yeah. yeah. Make stuff. So. All right. <laughs> That'd be fun. So you want to dip probably right about there, like two-thirds up in the orange. that does that see how it's kind of a blended when you go color on top of color it kind of blends which is really cool for your finish 
but as you're going, you don't really want your colors to blend together. And I'm going to stir the red for you. So then the last Can third, another... nope, just one, one in that. One. Yeah, that way it blends nicely. Otherwise, it kind of looks too rocket pop like. So like, now you want to do like the like bottom third. Right now. It does look like candy corn. Mm -hmm. Ah, that would have been cool. We could have done it. It's kind of out of season, but we could have like done the outside in white and then yellow and orange. That would have been cool. So, all right. There is her dipped candle. Look how pretty that is. That's awesome. All right, we got like eight minutes to carve, so let's get this Ooh. on the rack. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure at all. So, so you just put the bottom part right over the dowel on the rack, and that holds it in place, and then the handle just kind of locks in there. So now she does not even have to touch this candle. She is just going to do all of her turning up here by the handle and stuff like that. So, so that's awesome. She's getting ready. I'm going to move the camera here. We're going to Try to hook it up. Hi, everybody. Oops. I'm, My not, phone's a little late I'm not very coordinated, but it's okay. All right. Now we can see that. That looks pretty good. So the first thing we're going to do is cut the bottom off the candle. And let me get you. This is a bottom cutting tool that goes right in there. So we slide it right into the base there. And you would just push it right into the center and then do all your turning from the top like that. Do it, use your other hand, because now you're blocking the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm in the way. You have to be left-handed. Now go the other way, because the knife's on that side. The one that I just almost cut my finger off with. Oh. You know I can't have sharp yeah. things. That's true. So this is going to cut off all the stalactites at the bottom and everything. And this is a fun part, because it's kind of like the color reveal, and you get funny. to see everything. It looks like uh, sunset colored teeth. So. <laughs> See, that's all Christine's awesome colors. So Ooh. now we're going to get to, we're going to make marks. Um, I have this pattern. I don't know if you can see this really well, but I always make a pattern of any candle design that I'm doing. That way I make marks around the outside of the candle so we know where to make the cuts and all the cuts are even. So I'm going to hold this steady for you. And you can just make little marks on the candle where you're going to make your cuts. That way you know where to start the knife. See how she's just making a little dent in there. And this keeps all your cuts even all the way around the candle. Because if you just try to cut freehand without making these marks, I found that the cuts go like downhill. And then by the time you get around to the first set of cuts that you made, it's way off. So once you get more experience and you can do it, it's good. But this is a very simple, easy way to get started. And the candle fun way. And continue. It's very nice too. because. Then once you move on and you know get more experience making candles and carving and everything, you'll want to do more difficult patterns, and this still makes it very easy on the difficult patterns. Alright, All right, one last one. The last cut's gonna be up at the top here. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Feel pressured by this eight minutes. Yeah. You know, and that's not really a big deal because um, we have a vat of clear wax. So if the candle gets too hard, uh, too hard to cut, and it's not working out well, we're just going to dip this whole candle in the clear wax and warm it up for you. So I will make the first cut and show you how, and then you get to do the rest. All so right. what we're going to do is just take the knife at the first notch that we did, mm -hmm. and think about it like cutting butter, like just cutting a nice slice of butter off. It's going to be about the consistency of butter. So we just want to go down and just carve a slice off real nice and easy like that. And then we're going to turn this to the inside. And look how awesome that looks. Kind of like fruit striped gum. So now you want to make the cut down that way and turn your wax into the middle there. Do I need to hold that? I think I'll be okay. It should be okay. The only time you really need to like touch this upper handle is when you want to turn it. So good. That's good. That's a good cut. Perfect. And just pull your knife out. So you want to keep your knife like nice and neat, just like you did. That was actually really, really good. You have a nice steady hand. You don't want to like twist the knife or move it around because that kind of makes notches on your candle and things. You feel how soft the wax is now. It is. It's very nice. viable. It's not tall yeah. enough. And just, yeah. So you can just stretch it up a little and then just press it to the inside. So like as you're mm. pulling it, just stretch it up. Good. That was good. That looks really nice. nice. It's a nice even slice of butter. See, when you 
wiggled the knife. See how it made a little wiggle mark in there? Oh, so you turn yeah. it that way. Yep. Man. You will not notice that. Experienced carvers see that, but anybody that sees your candle is going to think that you're absolutely amazing and talented and artistic and that you can carve. They're going to expect a whole lot of stuff out of you. Hmm. Okay, well then. <laughs> So you feel how nice and soft the wax is and everything, and pliable? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it cuts through very easily. Kind of like Play-Doh, right? Kind of like Play-Doh. Yeah. I equate it to Play-Doh, so. Right. Fold over there? Yep, fold over that way. So this is making a pattern. We call this pattern the bows and sashes. Right now we're making the bottom part of the bows. That'll make a whole lot more sense as we get more into carving the candle, because you'll see the bows come alive and the sashes come alive. This is a nice, we always do this for everybody's first candle because you get to make a lot of cuts. Um, and it, since it's single cuts and you're not going cut behind cut. Next one you might want to make a little bit thinner, not quite that thick because you feel how when it's thicker, yeah, it's, it's a little harder to turn, to turn that way. Um, the next one, maybe make a little thinner. You know, it's going to look no. awkward now because he's thicker no, than everyone you're else. You're not even going to notice it, so oh. you're going to be your own worst critic, but you're not even going to notice it. Okay, now our next set of cuts, we're gonna go up to the next line that she put in there. And we're just gonna start our knife right there, nice and easy, and kind of come down behind the first cut. So you wanna make it thin at the top, and it kind of gets thicker as you progress down. And then we're gonna take that wax and turn it in like that. So you're gonna cut down that way and turn it in. This is a really pretty candle. Nice and bright and colorful like you. That's like mm. Christine's personality. The colors of this candle accurately reflect Christine's personality most days. Unless she try to wake her up when she's tired. Yeah, I don't really do that. <laughs> I'm not a morning person at all. <laughs> that was good. So this one you don't really have to make too deep because it's you know you're, it's a smaller piece of wax that you're curling under, so you can keep this one a little on the thinner side. Apparently, I like to cut deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we will, after we dip this in candle gloss, so you want to watch wiggling your knife. You got like a couple wiggle oh marks in goodness. there. What if I try to do that on purpose? It'd be like a wave pattern. You could, yeah, actually, yeah, that would be kind of cool. Right? If we, we did like a blue candle. If we did like greenish and bluish and made wave, that would be kind of cool. Maybe that's my calling. I don't know. Wave? That could be. <laughs> right? You may have just entirely invented your own new technique. See, look at that. Yeah. It's not the right candle, but it's okay. Something new. <laughs> Can you feel the wax getting a little harder? A little bit, yeah. Case? Yeah. So, so as the wax gets cooled off, it, it gets a little bit harder and stuff like that. And it gets to a point where, you know, it's either gonna break or the layers aren't gonna stick together. Like once it gets too cool. Oh yeah, look how hard that is now to turn over. Yeah, exactly. So it might have been a little thick too, but that, yeah. you know, there's that too. So now we're going to go to the top layer and do the same thing we did on the bottom layer, only in the alternating cavities here. So we're going to start right there, cut down, and then turn in there like that. So you're going to cut down there and turn in that way. Okay. Oops. Sorry, everybody, the camera's kind of moving as we bump the table. <laughs> Hope nobody's motion sickness yeah, right. sensitive. I feel like that goes along with most of our Facebook Live videos, though. So they yeah, that's true. It by that's now. true. Yeah. Nice. You're doing good. So this candle that she's carving is, Ooh. it's hard to tell, whoops, if it gets in the way, can just move it out, there you go. So this candle is actually nine and a half inches tall. Now you got really crazy with the knife on that one. I did so. get a little crazy. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. It was, you were hitting the other one and stuff, and it just sure. yeah, got out of control. But see, when you turned it over, you covered it up nicely, so you don't right. actually see that, so. That's one nice thing. Sometimes where you have something that you may not like, you may 
curl the wax in front of it and then you never see it. Most people are just amazed by the carved candles anyway and they don't really analyze too heavily into your work. You're good. I just want to move that out of the way. So I don't hit it again? Yeah. Put that in place. And you're doing good. Excellent. Good. So we did all that. So now up top you do the same thing. Carve down from there. And you're down in. So this is the point where it might start getting too hard to carve. We might need to dip it in the clear wax again, just to warm it up a bit. And that way it softens the wax up and we're able to carve it. The worst thing is if we would like make one of your curls here and then the wax is too brittle and it breaks, which it looks like. Yeah, that's about where we are at. Yeah. Should so I? Keep, we should dip. Okay. Let's dip it. So we're just going to take this. I'm going to grab the camera. So we're just going to take this candle here. I'm going to flip it back around because I oh, can't yeah. see anything. There we go. Got it? Yep. And we're just gonna put it in the clear wax for like 10 seconds. And it may look like the colors mute, but they pop right back out as soon as we put it in the gloss, so. All right, about 10 seconds. All right, that's good. And then I'm just gonna go real quick in and out of the water, because we don't want it to cool too much. All right. And back in business here. So now you're going to start at your last cut so you can still see your marks even though we dipped it. Yep. Wherever you want to start at the top. Could you, oh, yeah. Right yeah. There. Okay. Good. Glad you remembered where we were at. <laughs> now it's a lot easier. Oh, yeah. That was a lot smoother. Oh. Let's be careful getting too close to the cut underneath. not quite go as down so far or go a little deeper. Good. That's great. You have a nice steady hand. You're doing good. Sometimes. Besides when I decide to make the waves, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That was like 10 cuts ago. Was that it? Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, that's ancient history now. It's very tempting to move the knife where you want it to be. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, when you're making your first candle, that's what you do. Like after that, you know, experienced carvers know just what to do with the knife and stuff like that. We've given lessons to like chefs and everything, and they're great with knives, but they're used to like chop, 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 everything. Next, we're gonna use what we call the gouge tool, and we're gonna make our sashes. So you see, that's called the bow part of the candle. Now we're gonna make the sash part. So we're gonna use our gouge tool. It's got two different ends, a thick end, and then a thinner end. We are gonna use the thicker end, because we're gonna make like a sunset colored candy cane here. So what we do is just go in gouge deep to reveal lots of colors. Hold your finger at the bottom so you can pull the wax out. And then just twist it up like a candy cane. So you have a candy cane that matches your candle. And then you're just going to put it right. Sometimes you need to stretch it out a little. And you just want to drape the sash right in between your bows here. And that's called the sashes part. All right, thick end. It's all you. If you hold your finger at the bottom, it comes through nicer. Start right there? Yep, start right there. Gouge nice and deep and really not that not quite that no, deep. That, I told you, you we, we know you're I good. cut deep. We've, yeah. we've talked about this. Wow. That's because you're a beast, yeah. Right, I can't <laughs> help it. All right, excellent. <laughs> it's a little lopsided. That's all right. You can squish that in and stretch yeah, that in because I'm, it's thicker. That's so what I'm That's doing. a great plan. Okay. That was a really good plan. I like that. I meant so. to do that. Way to recover. <laughs> Perfect. Oh no. <laughs> and that's okay. That's good. I so broke it. To, so she was twisting her candy cane and broke it. But that's what we have clear wax for. You can't see it, but we're just going to work quickly. Trying to show you all the mistakes that you could do. Yeah, this is what could possibly happen. So we just dipped it in the clear, clear wax and kind of mushed it all together because the wax is nice and soft. Now be gentle with it. Sorry. So we dipped it in the clear wax. It just got it a little softer so that we could put it back together and stuff. Okay. 
That just shows and proves that you've never carved a candle before. It's true. We weren't kidding. Yeah. But look how awesome she's doing. That one's a little more even. Yeah, that's good job. Good job. Nice. Twist it up nice. That's, that's one of my favorite things to do. I call them like wax candy canes. <laughs> I love doing that. Yeah, I like that one. That one turned out well. That one turned out really well. So now at the top, we're going to do the same thing. Only this time, instead of going all the way to the bottom, because we don't want to mess that up, you're going to kind of want to scoop the wax out. All right, so we're starting the, here. We're going to start in between your two cuts there. And then all the way at the top? All the way at the top right. there. So you go straight from there down to there. Good. I like how you made this one a little thinner because it's a little thinner up top. So if you put your finger there, you'll be able to scoop it out nicer. There you go, perfect. Now twist it up. Good job, good job. Oh, very nice. That's awesome. This is fun. <laughs> this way a little bit. This Ooh. might be my favorite tool because you can do cool things with it. Yeah, that's fine. I meant One. to do that with the cool in the out powder. Yeah. So if you if your cuts are uneven, that's okay because you're revealing color. Did you break it again? I did. Oh my goodness. It was the end this time. It just fell right off. <laughs> we got it. We got it. There we go. It's hot, so we'll push it back together. Christine's been pouring lots of wax, so yeah. our hands are getting pretty tough. He doesn't do too much to me anymore. Nope. Gotta be tough to work here. <laughs> Not for wimps. <laughs> All, right. All right, excellent. Once we dip this in the gloss, like after we're done here, we'll cut out the top, make the bottom level. Once we dip it in the gloss, there'll be a little time for like a Q&A session. So if anybody has any questions, you can post them in there now. I'm watching your car, so I can't really like moderate the comments, but we will look at that as the candle's cooling and get all your questions answered too. Excellent, good. So now's the time where we wanna kinda turn the candle around. If there's anything you wanna fix, you wanna make sure all these bows and sashes are pushed in there real tight and everything. So remember this is a forever candle, so you're gonna have it forever in your lifetime and you can even will it to somebody else too and give it to them. Hmm. My mistakes so if there's are anything, forever ingrained in this candle. Yeah, but it looks, <laughs> it looks awesome. So I think it looks really good. So if there's anything, you know, sometimes you get like little wax fuzzy. Yes, I noticed there. the flakes like on the white here, yeah. some of the flake off a little bit. You can take that, you can just take that off, that's no big deal. Sometimes they need to be cut off too, but it looks pretty good. So. I just usually make sure everything's tight in here. Nothing's gonna fall off, so. I mean, in case there's an earthquake and the candle has to make it through the earthquake, you want everything to be like <laughs> tight on there. All right, so now at the top, remember up at the top is our oil candle part, so we wanna cut that out because we're eventually gonna take the handle out after we dip it in the gloss coat. So we're just gonna cut right around the top nice and even so that it'll be easy to remove the handle when the time comes. And then you might want to trim up a little bit on the bottom there. There's yeah. a couple slag tights still. You can give that a trim. This is the time to make everything perfect. Because once the gloss is on there, you can't really make any changes or fix anything, you know. Mm. And you could also, if we had gems or whatever, oh. or beads or something, we could push it into place now. But what about we glitter? You know what? We could glitter this at oh, the end. With, with my ocean candle and glitter it? Yeah. Oh, that'd be so awesome. That would be awesome. So I usually put the glitter on, like you put the gloss on and it's all sticky. Right. So then the glitter likes to stick at oh, that point. Perfect so. time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all if right. we put the glitter on now and then dipped it into the gloss, we'd have glitter under gloss. Glittery gloss. I don't want that. Probably not everybody wants that. So no. Maybe everybody does. But okay. We are a big fan of glitter here. So now, Christine's candle. And I usually just put it on the table to get the bottom nice and flat. So I just kind of push down. 
Wait, you do that without glossing it? Yeah. You, you take it off before you gloss? Yeah, take it off, make the bottom flat, cut the top out, and everything's good there. So, look how pretty it is. <laughs> All right. So now, we are going to beautify it even more. I'm going to take it over and gloss it here. First thing, I always stir up the gloss. You want to keep the lid on the gloss because the gloss evaporates very easily. Um, so you will have one hard thing of candle gloss if you leave the lid off. So every time I take the lid off, I want to stir it up. This does thin out with water. It's a water-based acrylic, just a clear water-based acrylic, a big monster bucket of it. So every time I take the lid off, I stir it, make sure it's the proper consistency. You don't want it too thick, otherwise it's not going to get into like all the nooks and crannies of the candle where it needs to. Like we need to get gloss in everywhere on there because we want it to all be shiny. So we're just going to dip it. And I usually twist it a little when I dip it just because I feel like the gloss will go in all the crevices and everything of the candle much better that way. I don't know if it's actually true, it's just my technique. Twist it out. And this is the really awesome part because we'll just hang it here to drip off a little because the gloss kind of gets everywhere and it's sticky. So we'll let it drip off into there for a little bit. Oh my God, look how gorgeous that mm -hmm. is. It's already starting to look shiny. Can you believe that's your first candle? That yeah. is so awesome. That is really pretty. I love the colors. That is like the perfect color for January wintertime blues here. Yeah. Because it's the complete opposite of it. <laughs> yeah, we really haven't seen too much snow, but like the whole being dark all the time. We're not talking about snow here. It's yeah. been nicer. <laughs> it has been really, really nice. So, cool. All right. I'll just let that drip for a couple seconds. Questions? We will do the questions. I'm going to bring this over just so that I can put the lid back on the candle. I don't want it to dry out and be mm. one big blob. Sure. It'll be so disappointing to the next person that wants to come and carve. So, we'll bring it over here. We're just going to put it right there and that candle can hang out and just drip for a little bit. It usually takes like, I don't know, like 15 minutes for the gloss to, to dry enough to where you're going to want to touch it and take the handle out. So we're just going to let it hang out there and it can do its like candle thing. Put the lid back on the gloss. And we'll show you, we don't know if uh, we'll be here at the end, so. Nice. Cool, so we'll turn the candle on. camera around, see if there's any questions. Let's see who we got here. Kathy's here. Are you still here, Kathy? Hi, if you are. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. So, awesome. And JC, how much do you sell them for? We really, I mean, we do the lessons here and everything, um, but it really depends on your market and stuff like that. Um, I have one customer that just does carved candles. That's all they do. For weddings and everything like that she gets anywhere from like 125 to 200 depending on you know what she's doing like how much goes into it she puts flowers on them she really does a great job like if you google carved wedding candles there's some fantastic carvers out there that really do amazing things um just for a simple candle like that like christine could walk out of here and probably sell it around here for like 35 40 dollars right away but she's not going to do that because she's going to no, keep it forever either i don't mistake. know <laughs> yeah yeah, even that you'll you'll notice like once you've carved candles now that you look now that you've done it and you look at other people's carved candles you'll be able oh, to see yeah. little like, oh, things and this and that mm -hmm. yeah yeah like no, not so <laughs> steady with the knife so um so that's you it you know it really depends on the market and stuff like that i have one guy he just does beach shows all the time he's a beach bum loves to surf goes up and down every single coast carving candles just making enough money to to surf and everything like that. I don't really know what he charges for his candles. He stops by probably every six months, gets a pallet of wax, all kinds of supplies, loads his trailer up, and he goes back to surfing. And you know what? That's a pretty awesome lifestyle because that's what he wanted for himself. So we're all for that. Yeah. Thanks for that question, though, JC. That's awesome. Um, Kathy, hi, how are you? <laughs> if you're still here. So you said we used to have one many years ago. We got in the Poconos. Nice. Wait on our honeymoon. Oh, that was probably one of my friends. He had a big carving business in the Poconos. He's retired now and in South Carolina, but he was one of the most awesome people that I've mm -hmm. ever met in my life. So, hi, Valerie. I see you. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. Chester's next. So, hi, Chester <laughs> from Chess Sense. So, thanks for joining us. Okay. And Chester says, can you do it with soy wax? Not right now. Excellent question. Excellent, excellent question. Not right now. Soy wax is real brittle. 
So you see, like when we did the candle, um, how many curves and everything there is on there. You see on the candle. I should turn the camera around because I don't know where the candle is. Oh, there it is. So you see how many curves and twists and turns? A brittle wax won't allow you to do that. It won't allow you to like twist the wax and, and carve it up and do funny things with that. So not as of yet. I have heard rumors that there's going to be a new soy wax out on the market um, from EcoSoya that's going to be pliable. So I am super excited to try that to see if that will carve. So because that's going to kind of be a game changer in the carving market. So. Hope that answers your question. Mary McNabb is here. Hi, Mary. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. And Marie's here. This is so neat. I would love to add carb candles to my line. You yeah, should. Definitely. Next time you visit, you should come up and take a class. So Marie comes up to our showroom to pick stuff up. So she's really awesome. Right. And then you mentioned, too, um, that if you don't want to you want to, what was the $20 one? There oh, right, right, right. So, like, if you don't need it, we, we instruct you. We stand over you and do just like we did here in this, um, you know, and tell you where to make the cuts and stuff like that. We do have people that just come up and they'll buy cores or bring their own cores and just rent the equipment. So that way they don't have to purchase the equipment because it's, you know, it's a decent expense. You know, you're looking at, like, twelve to $1,500 to get started with, like, you know, everything that we used here today. So you can come up and just use the equipment, the racks, you know, the knives, stuff like that, and make your candles, dip and use them. Just let me know what colors you want to do, and I'll put them in the melter. So. And then once you sell a bunch, so you can get your own equipment. There you go. There <laughs> so you go. Way to Work start up to without it. the expense but right you, away. Right, exactly. Good point, good point. This is so. savvy sometimes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. Um, what days do we do classes? Uh, we do classes. We do these carved classes Tuesday through Thursday. Um, they're a one-on-one -on -one session, so it's by appointment only. Um, just give us a call like 24 hours in advance. That way we can plug in the melter, make sure all the wax is melted for you and stuff like that. It takes very long to melt. Yeah, especially in the winter when it gets cold right. in here. <laughs> so, so you want to make sure you give us, you know, 24 hours notice. But Tuesday through Thursday usually, sometimes Friday afternoons. Fridays we normally do our other classes. Um, and we have like our first Friday workshops, which right. are going to be Next all day. Week. Super exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's an all day. So we couldn't do it that Friday. But usually Tuesday through Thursday. So, oh, look, Marie's going to come visit us soon. Yay! Yay. That's good. <laughs> Okay, we're trying to find your questions here, so sorry as we scroll through. Thanks for being patient. Okay, Carolyn says, hi, Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn says, I've made pillar candles, but when I burn them, the wax always burns out to the side and the wax runs down the side. Mm -hmm. How can I make them burn evenly? Ah, just use a smaller size wick. Um, if it's burning out to the edge, you want that in container candles typically because right. you want a nice big melt pool and, you know, a nice scent and everything. But pillar candles, you kind of want them to burn down in. So use a smaller size wick. It just sounds like the wick that you're using is a little bit too big. If you use a smaller size, then, you know, it'll burn out easier for you. So Marie's visiting us. Deidre says, hi, I'm a beginner with candle making. I would love to try the carved candle. What supplies are needed to do this at home? Just like we went over here, um, I'm going to... So you need to start with your core. That used to be a core, but now it's not. So you would need your core, your handle. Um, you can make your own rack, or we have racks too. Um, pretty much anything that this this hook on the candle can like hook from, you can use for a drying rack. Um, we have a base and a rack that puts together. That way, you do not have to touch the candle. You can just put it together, and then the the core candle goes on there, and everything like that that you saw in the video. There's all different knives. You can use like pretty much anything for carving candles. Um, you can use woodworking tools and stuff like that. We use paring knives. We bend them in different shapes for different things. This gouge tool is really nice too. All the knives and everything are pretty inexpensive. Um, you would need a way to melt your wax. We have this nice big fancy candle fun melter that's really awesome and we love it. But you can set up a system at home too just with melting pots and bats of wax where you can dip like smaller candles. Um, so you could do that. You would need the gloss to make it shiny and a bucket of water. That's probably your cheapest expense because <laughs> you can just use any type of recycled bucket or anything like that. So. And the pigments. Right? Oh, and the pigments, yeah. Pigments and wax, that type of thing. So um, we use just like a 141 paraffin and then this would be like a sample of the orange pigment that we use and stuff. I think mm -hmm. I added a little red to that because that orange does not matter. It's match a little bit different orange. color. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can mix them, obviously, and get your yeah. own colors. I, I think I wanted something just a little bit brighter for what we were doing, so I added some red to the, get that color. Um, so that's cool. Nita, I think that's how we say your name. If we apologize, so do you take any classes in India or online? No, but I would love to. That sounds <laughs> like I would travel to India. That would be awesome. So, but as of right now, just in Quaker Town. 
and Rosna's with us. This is just amazing. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. So cool. All right. I think we're probably we're around. I think we're probably about ready. This should be like not tacky enough. So we don't want to really touch the candle too much with the sticky gloss on there. So I'll just kind of test it. So if you feel like feel it, you can, you don't want to like wrap your hand around it and right. touch it too much. But I think it's like dry enough to where we can take the handle out now. Okay. Um, but you see all the gloss dripping from right. the bottom. So like all the wet gloss is going to be on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I usually just take like a piece of the tin foil. You can fold it over. Put your candle on top of that before we take it off. And just fold it over. Yeah, just put that down. Okay. Oops, I don't want to put it in the glue or it's going to stick forever. Mm. And then take your candle off the rack. Put it down on the tin foil for now. That way it doesn't stick to like anything. Right. <laughs> and then you can. Do you want me to take this out of your way? Yeah, you So now she's just going to unscrew the handle and that's going to come out right out. It's going to allow her to take the handle out of the candle. Sometimes it gets a little sticky because I like to put the gloss all the way to the top. So sometimes it gets a little sticky, you might have to like press on it. You can just hold right down in here and try to twist the handle a little bit to get it out. There you go. A little wiggle. wiggle it. There you go. And now we see the oil chamber on the inside. You guys smooth out if there's anything going on on the top. Just smooth it out with your finger. A little extra gloss there. Yeah. It tends to build up because remember we made that slit so right. the gloss wants to like sneak in there and be sneaky. So. <laughs> And then to finish it off, we put, yeah, we just put the, the oil candle wick right in there. We have instructions too. And then she is all set. That Ooh. is her first candle. <laughs> so you can pick it up and hold it up next to you. Because this is a photo op. I'm afraid to touch it now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to touch it too much and handle it. Right, Congratulations, Christine. Yay. That is your first candle. And it's gorgeous. It is really, really nice, Thank too. You. So, Do you like it? I do. I don't yeah. want to look at it too hard because now I know all of my mistakes. But yeah, right. yeah. You won't. Like, <laughs> a half hour from now, you're not going to see your mistakes, and it's going to be awesome. So you did really, really good. Thank you. Nice. Was that hard? No. It's not hard. I, w I was a little nervous about it, especially the cutting part. Yeah. But yeah. it got easier after you did a few. Yeah. And it was really awesome. So good job. Mm -hmm. All right. You can set that down. Let's just let it. We're just going to leave it alone and it can dry and do its candle thing and everything. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. That's how easy it is to make a carved candle. If you ever want to come to our showroom and take a lesson, we would love to have yes. you. So it was super exciting. Um, thank you for everybody for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful rest of your weekend. And look forward to more of our Facebook Live videos. Thanks. We're going now. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>